uh, next time you you probably want to use a deeper dish. Are you telling me what to do? No, I, you may want to. It's it's called a suggestion. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Flo, Dudes Behind the Camera, and my most recent video, we did a take on Asian sauces that you can make from home if you have the basic ingredients. And I had asked our viewers to see what sauce they would like to see me make from scratch, and quite a few suggested black bean sauce. So as you can see, the sauces, or the main ingredients I have, are from the same ingredients that I used for other sauces, plus we're adding fermented black bean. They come in a little package like this, or they come in bigger packages, but they're pretty cheap. It's a dollar for a bag. And I believe I had walked by to see how much a, a jar of black bean sauce costs, and it was $3.49, I believe, for a little jar. You know, black bean sauce is pretty versatile. I am making spare ribs with black bean sauce today, but if you go to a Chinese restaurant, there's always black bean sauce on the menu. Black bean beef, black bean chicken, tofu, fish. Full written recipes are available to my patrons on Patreon, and you can find out more information in the description below. So let's get started. I'm making about two pounds of spare ribs today, but you can easily cut this recipe in half. So I'm starting off with two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Has that thing started leaking at all? No, but this thing doesn't stay up anymore when I pour, so I yeah. have to hold it. Oh, but, first um, world problems, dude, eh? <laughs> two teaspoons of sesame oil. Oh, I'm almost out. I was at the store today, too. I didn't even pick up these ingredients that I... I'm running out of two tablespoons of soy sauce. Well, you know what that means when you start to run out of stuff. What? It means that you're cooking a lot at home. Well, that's true. And saving us money. Two tablespoons of Shaoxing wine. And I like this brand. I don't know if you can find it, but it's from Taiwan. It's a little bit more expensive than the regular Shaoxing wine. That Most of it, unfortunately, comes from China. I don't normally buy products from China. Two tablespoons of cornstarch. Half a teaspoon of salt. Four teaspoons of sugar. And I'm just gonna start with this and get my pork in there. Let's just mostly mix. The cornstarch will dissolve as I add the pork in there and stir some more. I'm using pork side ribs and you can get your butcher to cut them like this across the rib in smaller widths. I think, well I buy these at the Asian market so I can already find them packaged like this. But at a regular butcher, you can just get ask them to cut them for you. And I'm going to remove the silver skin at the back of these ribs. And I don't know if Chinese cooks do that because, you know, the Chinese, we eat everything. I am just going to cut these up into little segments. And these are served at dim sum. If I turn it this way, you can actually see where the bones are. When these are served at dim sum, they're just bite-sized pieces. Actually, that just makes makes no sense. When we make them, they are bite-sized pieces. <laughs> Dude has memories of ordering this at dim sum, and I have memories of my mom making this dish for dinner. Yeah, definitely. We're, Flo and I were just talking about food is memory, memories, and the evoke nostalgia and, and certain things and people 
And um, yeah, I think about, you know, this dish and this is something that we ordered every single time we went to dim sum. It was a staple. Whereas Flo's family never ordered it at dim sum. Yeah, I don't know why we never did. We ate this at home a lot. Maybe it's because my mom made it. That's why we never ordered it. Mm -hmm. The meat cost me about $10 a pound. And at dim sum, you could probably get a little plate like this, right? Yep, that's about it. For like four or five bucks, I mm -hmm. think. So I think it's a pretty good deal. Mm. No, I didn't get all of this for 10 bucks. All of it was, I think, $17, because one was $8 a pack for the pack and one was nine. So $17, I have two pounds of ribs. It just doesn't compare. No. And once you get all your pork, chopped up. Just add it to the marinade and just mix it well. I'm going to let that sit for about half an hour. If you're able to do this ahead of time and marinate it overnight, it'll be even tastier, I think. But we're using a pressure cooker, so that should help infuse the little bits of meat. I rinsed my black beans. I only used two tablespoons and essentially you just want to get all the salt and and stuff off of it so it's not so salty. Then I'm going to grate, I was going to say giant thumb size, <laughs> it's two ounces of ginger. I'm just going to grate it right into the pork. I just find it's easier to grate than to chop and mince. And I'm using six cloves of garlic. I can get in there. So I find if you just smash your garlic, you can just easily remove the skin. I say that, watch, it's gonna be hard for me to remove. Nope, see, ta-da. And we're just gonna chop this up. What I remember is my mom chopping up garlic and black beans using a giant cleaver. And she actually said something to me the other day which I thought was funny. She's like, I don't know how you use this knife and use it so quickly. <laughs> so I do have some, some skills. <laughs> According to your mom. <laughs> Only because she's not used to using a chef's knife and so she finds it difficult to use. I guess with a cleaver, you're not using a rocking back and forth. I suppose not, but I've watched a YouTube video, like a master Chinese chef, mm -hmm. and he was doing these elaborate cuts into meat with his cleaver. I know, people are so skilled with cleavers. And I'm going to chop up the black beans. I guess some people leave them whole. But my mom used to chop it up, so I'm going to chop it up. Black bean goes a long way. It's pretty pungent. Yeah. Quite stinky, actually. Well, on its own, in its raw form, but yeah. when you bring it in and incorporate it with other stuff, it's all good. That's true. And then we're going to add this to the marinade. Pretty good. It sure does. And it's all mixed together. Yeah, that black bean wasn't smelling so good by itself. I'm using my eight quart instant pot today because I know that this plate fits in here nicely. But if you have a smaller plate, you're making less, you have a six quart, you can totally do it in there too. So I'm going to see how much I can get onto this plate without overcrowding it. I think I might be able to do it, the whole thing. It fits? Yeah, it'll be fine. I'm gonna put the dish on the trivet and then lower it into the pot. I have about a cup and a half 
of water in there. Okay. Locking it into place, making sure your sealing knob is on sealing. We're going to set it for 15 minutes. So I figure two full racks of ribs I would cook for only 15 minutes. That surely should be done in 15 minutes. Moment of truth. Ooh, look at that. It looks so yummy. It sure does. All right. There's a lot of sauce that was created. Uh oh. <laughs> Try to get it out. Okay. Okay. You can do it. You can do it. My goodness, she did it. I did. I kind of want to do the taste. Yes, no, no, do it. No, not she do it. She said it, do it. I'm not doing it. Are you all ready for? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> the taste. Is that for drama? I'm not dramatic. We were talking about this being one of our childhood uh, favorites eh? in, in different contexts. For me, it's in the for dim sum and for you, it's mainly at home. Yeah. Mmm. You guys do realize that when I do the taste, I take it very seriously. So if it tastes not so good, I will say it honestly. <laughs> that just goes to show how ace a cook flow is. Aww. You can pay me later. <laughs> Pressure cooking just is excels at softening the meat and infusing the flavors. I agree with that. All right, so it's mm, it's really flavor packed, and the meat, as I said, was is uh, is tender. Mm. And you know, one of the best parts of this dish, well, there is oil in there, but past that is pure liquid gold. Look at all <laughs> that sauce in there. Yeah. Over steamed white rice. Amazing, guys. Amazing. Amazing. I don't know if you guys know, but I recently sent out a newsletter from my website for those who have subscribed. And I just launched this new newsletter to notify people of new videos that go up so you never miss an episode and any new tips or new finds that I think you would enjoy. I'm going to include that in the newsletter as well. And I hope to send that out weekly. So come by the website flowlum.com and subscribe to my newsletter. And we'll put that link in the description. I got to say one more thing, Flo. This is one of those recipes that is like, I don't know, top whatever percentile that <laughs> is got to make it into the next edition of an instant pot recipe book yeah and i am working on that but you know i am not a trained chef or cook so you'll have to bear with me as i try to create more recipes so that i can fill that book for y'all because every recipe that i put in the my recipe book has to be something that I'm gonna enjoy, that my family's gonna enjoy, and that it is a tried and true recipe and not just filler. All right, guys, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and check out my recipe book if you haven't already down here, and always videos over there. Till next time, be simple, ordinary, and joyful.